What's going on, girls and guys? It is your favorite data engineer in the corner, Ben Rogajan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Today, we're gonna talk about the struggles of being a data engineer, because here's the thing, it's not all gumdrops and rainbows and 120K salaries. In fact, there's plenty of hard work and challenges that we face every day as data engineers that can turn some people off when it comes to being a data engineer, but Personally, I do enjoy the job, so let's talk about some of the struggles that I face and have faced in the past, and hopefully they'll ring true if you are a data engineer or even possibly a data analyst, because some of these are very familiar to people who work with data in general, because these problems are just ubiquitous. Data is a fickle mistress, and it can be hard to just get everything to be right and to the way that she wants those queries to be written. So let's dive into the struggles of being a data engineer. First, let's talk about the challenge of everyone thinking that if they want a data set, it should only take you about 20 minutes to create it when you're working with some analysts or product managers, and they apparently suddenly realize that they need a mission critical data set in the next 20 minutes, and they've just decided to ping you, and you don't know how to tell them just because they've said it should be easy, it's not. And I have definitely found myself in this place a lot, being someone that actually understands how to write SQL. It just tends to be one of the problems that you run into is that everyone just assumes all data is one quick query away, but not all data sets are from some table called select star from, clean, pristine data set that you think exists somewhere. Thank you so much, Seth Rosen, for that joke that we've all enjoyed for the last couple of years, because that's not how it works. Data is complex and can require a lot of querying and engineering, thus the name data engineer, in order to get it into a place that actually fits your request. Don't get me wrong, I always thought it would take me 30 minutes to create a data set, but you quickly find that sometimes it takes you a day or multiple days between having to figure out the logic of a table or maybe figure out which tables you're actually supposed to be using, because I've definitely pulled from the wrong tables, assuming it's the right one, or maybe the data set that you're pulling from isn't even accurate because whatever data that exists in it no one has used for three years and now it's just duplicated data for some reason, all of which can make it very difficult to find the right data set sometimes. And don't get me wrong, a lot of companies are trying to assuage some of these problems by creating things like data dictionaries and having more ownership around data and data governance, but these problems still exist. I have heard the term source of truth being sold as a marketing term to this day, and I was hearing it back almost a decade ago when I first kind of broke into the data space. So the fact that people are still using this term source of truth as a marketing term to try to say like, oh, our product will help you get there just tells me enough of what I need to know in terms of the fact that we'll probably never fully get to a source of truth. We're always just trying to get there, trying to improve the data sets that much better. And yes, some companies have some of their data well set and well-developed, but even then there's just this extra step of making sure that the way you're querying is accurate, making sure that if it's more complex, you know, it needs to bring in multiple different data sets that you have time to actually accurately assess if your data is right. Because I've definitely been in situations where I've seen people send out data that wasn't right, both to internal and external partners, and it never ends up well. So if someone tells you that a data set should be quick to query, they're probably not actually clear on what you need to do. But that is definitely a struggle a lot of data engineers and probably even some data analysts out there know all too well because once you know SQL, everyone just comes to you for all their data set needs. Now, when you're not stuck just pulling specific data sets for product managers, you're gonna be stuck fixing operational issues in your data pipelines. Now, some of this will be more on the lines of actually fixing broken pipelines, but some of this will just be adding columns to the pipelines that already exist, which isn't necessarily operational, but I kind of put it in the same maintenance task bin, where it's just this little task that's enough to get you constantly having to pivot the work that you're doing that you can't actually do your bigger projects. And that's a definite struggle I think we as data engineers face because we're always having to be like, oh, we've launched this table. And then a week later, someone's like, oh, can we also add you know, this column and that column? Or maybe it's even two weeks later. Basically, the way I like to always think about it is every table you create will create two or three tasks in the future unavoidably. Some will be connected to the fact that people will want more columns added. Others will be referenced around the fact that someone upstream will break something or change one of the objects that you're pulling from and now cause your data pipeline to break because depending on how you've developed your system, it could be very brittle. Hopefully, I think a lot of systems these days are being built a little more dynamically where they can kind of handle some of these issues. But in some cases, that's not how it works. And if you change a column name or data type, they can still break a lot of pipelines. And let's not even forget about data quality issues where maybe someone upstream has suddenly changed a process or 
has some field that possibly is more of a free text field rather than a drop down as it should be. And now you're getting state abbreviations that shouldn't even exist because someone fat fingered the wrong data type. And now you've got to fix that whole data issue as well. So there are a lot of things in terms of operational problems that you will face on a daily basis that keep you from doing some of the work that you'd rather be doing. And like I said, it's always like you build one table and that one table leads to three four, five future tasks that are all kind of like these problems that I've referenced for the last minute. Now, to make matters worse, another problem you'll face in terms of having to manage and maintain operational systems is we're still kind of in this process, I think, of switching over from a lot of the custom ETLs that were developed over the last two or three decades into more modern systems where we're using things like Airflow or managed workflows or astronomer.io or tooling where a lot of that custom tooling, which was basically just people redeveloping things like Dagster.io or Airflow a hundred times over into their systems are just now getting replaced. So meaning that a lot of these systems are overly complicated. They have, you know, connections to a metadata base and some form of scheduler that they've developed that is custom and you have to manage it and fix it and replace it. And it just becomes very heavy and unnecessary in terms of the work that we should be doing. So instead of doing data focused work as data engineers should be, you're constantly focused on just keeping the system running because the systems that have been left behind just eventually become overly cumbersome and unnecessary in a modern world where we have a lot of other options in terms of better ETL and ELT solutions for data pipelines. These systems did make a lot more sense, I think, five or 10 years ago when a lot of this kind of tooling wasn't as well developed. There wasn't as good of communities around them. And, you know, we've kind of come a long way, but it kind of has left us a lot of problems to deal with now where we're having to replace a lot of it to make systems more maintainable in the future and just more reliable and supportable as people are trying to get the most out of their data. And honestly, the biggest challenge deal with the hundreds of new data sets that they've got to pull in because even now small companies have easily 20, 30, 40 business applications that they're relying on and that they want answers out of when it comes to pulling data and creating reports from. All of which means we need to streamline a lot of these processes, which means you have an unavoidable migration in your future. Now, before digging into points four and five, let me just take a quick moment to ask if you're enjoying this video, take a quick moment to like and subscribe. And hey, if you want, share this video with your friends who are considering becoming data engineers to either one, scare them away quickly from this profession or maybe pique their interest. You can be the ones that help them make that decision by pointing out that point number four on my list is a lack of clear standards when it comes to building things like data pipelines. I think this is still kind of a thing I've seen around different companies is that no one I feel like has a clear set of standards when it comes to building data pipelines. Like I've seen a few people put together their own versions, but every set of data pipelines I've seen, even when it's using something like Apache Airflow, just seems to be built slightly differently and differently enough to where it can drive me nuts. And that's assuming that they're using something like Airflow. When it comes to custom ETLs, it's often even worse. I've seen custom ETL systems that for one business application that they're using, they're using object-oriented programming for another, they're using more scripting-focused programming for another, they're using something like serverless, and it just becomes chaos very quickly. And so this is often a very big problem I think I've seen across companies is there isn't necessarily a clear standard for how to build a data pipeline. Everyone just kind of uses whatever works at that moment. And so that's kind of a problem that I've seen and it makes it very difficult again to maintain these systems and can be very frustrating as you go into each of these different code bases. Finally, the last struggle I wanted to mention was the fact that data engineers do tend to be this middle child. You know, oftentimes we're dealing with data coming from software engineers and business applications and have to then kind of push it out to analysts and data scientists. And we don't really necessarily get the cool factor of data scientists where they tend to get all the articles written about their work. And some people don't always view us as complete software engineers because we use so many different tools and solutions, which can make us feel a little bit out of place in the whole data pipeline. Although we have to do a lot of complex work, sometimes that can be a little frustrating because it seems like our work tends to be dictated by other people rather than our opinion being asked. Oftentimes we just have to take the code that data scientists have cobbled together and develop some sort of data pipeline out of it because oftentimes data scientists just put a bunch of their code into some form of Jupyter Notebook and then run that for a while until someone realizes they should productionize it. So that often leads to other problems and can make, again, data engineering feel like we're just here to serve other people's needs rather than developing kind of core data infrastructure that could really help improve the company's overall decision-making process by having us build and develop systems that are more robust and not just kind of one-off systems and solutions. 
So that is another struggle that you will face as a data engineer, just playing this middle child in between software engineers and data scientists where you kind of just have to kind of work with what they're doing along with all of the other work you're expected to get done. Now, those are the five things that I wanted to mention for the struggles that you will face as a data engineer. If you have your own struggles that you faced as a data engineer, please take a moment to reference them below. I'd love to hear some horror stories of whatever you have, pipelines that fail, overly complex ETLs, unruly XFN partners that don't give you enough time to create data sets. List it all below. Let's hear it. Let's let all the people who are thinking about becoming data engineers see the maybe more negative side of things. And I'll definitely need to create a video to counteract this at some point called the benefits of being a data engineer. With that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.